Hi, I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage. Uh, I am the technical chairperson for the Rolls-Royce Club of Southern California, and we are holding our monthly tech meet. And today, we will be resealing a rear shock for a silver cloud. Recently, we posted a video on how to rebuild the shocks, or rear shocks on a silver cloud, and this is the rear shock. Uh, one of our club members decided to take it upon himself, actually more than one has since that video, and one guy had great success. This other guy, he was concerned. Once he got it apart, he saw on the shock shaft, the pivoting shaft, you can see where the seal was riding, and here's what usually happens. This is the original seal, which is nothing but a rubber packing. So when it's brand new, they have to force it in there, or they should. Uh, so it rides right there. Um, so what happens with these is over years, especially right-hand drives, if you, uh, they're right-hand drives, they go through mud and muck and water and sand and all that, and stuff will get inside and make it corrode and, and roughen it up. So what we have here, this part right here rides on the bushing in here, so that's lubricated all the time real nice, and it doesn't get that dirt. This is supposed to keep it out but it's got pitting and corrosion on here. It's pretty rough. And the customer or the, the, the member was concerned that it, his new seal will not seal. But here's first point. Here's your packing. It's loose, see that? Even when it's in here, it's gonna be squished down a little bit, but this seal, first it has a spring loaded. There's a spring in here. See that spring? That goes around the rubber seal, and it keeps compression on it. Uh, so this seal, which is an aftermarket seal, there's the CR number is 12364. Uh, I get them from McMaster Car. You have to order them by shaft size and housing size from them. But if you look at it, when it's this thing is finally in there, and you turn this, it is tight. Anybody, go ahead and turn that, Stu. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a tidy. Go ahead and turn that. It's it's tight. Oh, it's good. Which means it's going to be compressed against whatever it's sealing against. And this is not a part that goes like this all the time. It does this. Maybe that much. That's it. Okay, it's going to move a little quickly over bumps, but it's, it's not going to be working that seal. So what... I'm going to say is I would not, he was concerned, he wanted to know if he should send it out, have it rebuilt by a shock rebuilder, and they might put a new shaft on it, or have, you know, machine it or do whatever, or they might not. They might just do what I'm going to show you, and put it back together and say it's rebuilt. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sandpaper and and polish that as, as, as much as I can. Since this is so compressed, if we make it smaller there, it's okay. It's still gonna seal. So this is an old, uh, I gotta watch what I said, where'd my scissors go? So I'm gonna make my own little emery doodad. This is, this is long sandpaper. This is for a body airboard, uh, but this is 150 grit, and I'm just gonna I cut it in half, and I'm gonna cut it, and fold it in half. If I can get this without screwing it all up, this is dry sandpaper, so it won't. Uh, if you get it wet, it won't like it. You can get some. I don't have emery, so that that's probably what you should. And they also make some diamond emery, I think, don't they? That's it's. But if you do this, okay. We're not going to take enough off of that for you to ever notice it, to be honest with you. You can worry about it. Don't go nuts on it, in other words. Don't take a file. I wouldn't advise that. And. If you really, money is no object, you can press this out and have one made, or you can machine it from the outside. But if you do press, as you can see, this is a splined shaft here. Mm. The arm is splined on the inside, which means it has little slots in it, and the shaft is splined. Press it out, 
Make damn sure you mark its position before you do that. And if you do both of them, don't mix up the parts. Okay? Oh, look at Chuck. So you didn't take a lesson from Henry Ford, huh? No. This is Rolls Royce and Bentley. As you can see, I'm not going nuts on this, but uh, and we're, we don't have to make it perfect. Yeah, if, it looks better and feels better than it did. Yeah. In worst case scenario, it might seep a little, but it's not going to run out. You'll save a lot of money. And this is what I would do to my own car, without a doubt. And why did you say more with the right-hand drive then? Because mm -hmm. they're in inclement weather a little more often. That's why the values of the right-hand drive cars are a little less also, because they're in the England, which, especially compared to California. Any questions while we're doing this? Everybody's watching just intently as I'm sanding. This is what, 320? Uh, this is 150. 150. 320 is something you can use. I brought those others in case, but this is hard, hard metal here. Um, 320 is something good for paint or wood to smooth it. But I think this is going to be fine. How about your Scotch Bright? Steel wool? Uh, Scotch Bright. Well, see, now we get a better picture of how, how it looks. Definitely a lot smoother. It, it doesn't still has look as pitting, bad. Yeah. But yeah, but it's still. And it looks one good. thing you want to remember: the seal, the rubber seal, may not is not going to be out here. It's going to be more on the inside. And I think, to be honest with you, Stu, it's going to be just fine. We can. You might be able to polish that a little bit more. But there, there's no pressure on this fluid. Right. It's just right. a yeah. static right there so it looks a lot better yeah so that'll help with your psychology oh good psychological yes. part of that that's good you'll that's know good. that you polished it up and it should work perfect how's that good for another 50 years yeah yeah probably it's not going to run out like it did yeah because it was like as soon as you filled it yeah you know, puddles yeah. right puddles and then sitting on the rack with my car underneath it yeah. not a good idea oh. yeah oh yeah. At least it's like transmission parking. fluid and not brake yeah. fluid. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> brake fluid makes a great paint remover. Yeah. All right. So, in, in conclusion on this, for you out there, I myself would go ahead and put it together like this with the new seal before I'd go through all the expense of having another shaft made. It's worth a try. These are easy to get in and out, and it's not a major deal to take this thing out. So if it doesn't work, which I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to be good, the way this seal seals. And this actually has a double lip on it, if you look at it. It has a slight lip on this side. Mm -hmm. That's the side that goes against the... Um, this, it's going to go in like this. Okay. And I would, myself, since most of the damage is on the outside, this seal, I would drive it all the way down. Don't okay. leave it flush. It'll go down a little bit lower than this shoulder here. You want to get it in as far as possible. As possible. Okay? And how do you get it in there? We already did that on the other one. You, you tap it. Like a round punch or a socket. Sockets work great. You get the right size. Something like this, a big socket. You want to get it out as far as possible, but make sure it fits inside the hole. So, Because if you want to drive it below that, that level, then that's what you got to do. If you get it too small, what you're going to do is you're going to fold this and mess up the seal. Okay? That was quick. One other, just have One other question. question. Go ahead. On, um, on this piece here, did you did we put a, an RTV or something? Yeah, something I just use RTV up RTV. here. Okay. Because okay. even the original gaskets are really thin paper. Yeah, and you're yeah. going to want to put some sealer on there anyways. RTV will do fine. Just so long as the fluid, if it leaks a little bit out here, that's no big deal. Um, but the fluid only has to be above this piston assembly, right. really. It doesn't have to be all the way. You fill it to the top, but because inside is where that piston is, and that's always got to have the fluid. Thanks for joining us. I hope 
that this helps with uh, in com uh, conjunction with that other video, this this should work. So thanks for joining us.